This is it. Escalation is inevitable because Russia indirectly confirmed that Putin wants to recruit 1.2 million more soldiers, send them to Ukraine and also even potentially declare a total martial law. And just one of the reasons for this, it is because Moscow just keeps getting attacked by drones. And in addition to that, the president of Chechnya, Ramzan Kadyrov, started making very vocal threats against NATO. But more about all this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some huh, ridiculous huh, Russian huh, propaganda. So. Today we have once again our familiar and famous <laughs> Minister of Defense of Russia, Sergei Shagu, who probably once again discovers military stuff for once again for the very first time. And as always, I just can't help myself <laughs> but uh, thinking that this is exactly how these meetings with Shoigu they go. Shoigu is being explained. So, uh, Sergei Kazugetovich, this is a so-called helicopter and it does uh, this kind of flying because of, I would say, like magic. But if you want to go into details, uh, there is this uh, thing called um, physics. And then when they exit the helicopter, Sergei Shaigu is like, wait a second, this helicopter is in colors of Ukrainian flag. Who painted this? Give me this clown who painted Ukrainian flag on this, how do you say, helicopter. Uh, put him straight to jail. Then, as they enter the building, no, no, Sergei Kozhugetovich, uh, not to the right, please uh, follow the cameraman, uh, go to the left, please. Uh, I don't uh, like it here, let's go back. Oh, okay, Sergei Kozhugetovich, yes, as you say, please, please go ahead, let's follow you. Our next stop, Sergei Kozhugetovich, brings us to this uh, gym and pool. Oh, pool, you say? Uh, that's pretty much nice, a lot of water. Instead of putting this clown straight to jail, uh, let's better drown him here. Tuk, 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 And this, Sergei Kozhugetovich, is Zinaida Petrovna. She is in charge here. In charge, you say? Well, I like it. Well, boys, the tour is over for you. It's just me and Zinaida Petrovna. Now we have some personal matters to discuss. Please leave. Well, <laughs> that's what I was imagining anyway, so if you don't mind, can you please rate my interpretation skills down below in the comments from 1 to 10. Honestly, I think it was a little bit too cringe. And in return, I will rate your subscribing skills as well, because as of right now, 52.5% of you guys are still not subscribed to my channel. This is completely unacceptable, more than half of you watching not subscribe to the Russian dude army. I'm just gonna once again sit right here for as long as needed and wait until you do this process. Like and subscribe to my channel. Please go ahead and do it. And also, today is the very last day to enter the giveaway, so please hurry, if you want to win these super cool wallets, just follow me on Instagram and read my most recent post, the link is down below. But ok, now let's get serious and talk about another recent attack against Moscow, then I'll give you a very quick update from the east and the south of Ukraine and we'll finalize everything with the decision of Putin to mobilize 1.2 million people at the end of September. And so, yeah, this last night there was yet another drone which entered the Moscow city center and crashed there. And if you remember, just like Ukrainians promised approximately a month ago, they will surprise Russians by the end of August. And as you can see right now, pretty much every other day there are drones entering Moscow. Besides that, the following morning even more drones have been spotted to the south of the capital of Russia. And because of this, a lot of employees in the Moscow city center, they have been temporarily evacuated from their buildings. In addition to that, a seaport in Novorossiysk, which is just across Crimean Peninsula, once again spontaneously got caught on fire. And to be honest, it does not look like that Ukrainians are planning to stop, because according to this video, 270 more vampire drones are about to enter this fight in the near future. And of course, Putin sees it. It annoys him and it definitely enrages him. I mean, how is it possible that these drones can fly all the way towards Moscow without being intercepted? He is angry and he wants to respond. He already has something in his mind and we will talk about this very, very soon. 
But first of all, I want to really quickly talk about the situation in the east and the south of Ukraine. And so, as we go to the east, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians and Ukrainians continue their combat activities along Kupiansk, Svatove, Krimin front line. Russians even reportedly advanced somewhere, which is not yet confirmed by this map. Next we get closer to Bakhmut, and in this small settlement to the south called Zaitseve, Ukrainians were able to reportedly destroy an assault group of Russians along with their tank. And if you remember, approximately in the beginning of this war, one of the biggest Russian war crimes, it happened in Bucha. And so right here, we have a full and lengthy documentary about this event, which I want personally you to see during the weekend, and I uploaded it completely for free on my Patreon, the link is down below. And now, a very quick a similar update from the south, before we talk about the decision of Putin. And so, first of all, unfortunately, there has been yet another attack against civilian infrastructure in Zaporozhye. And then, in response to that, right here we have a video from Energodar, where a Ukrainian drone literally enters through the window to inside the building of a local police station, which at this moment is occupied by Russian invaders. And so, reportedly, several high-ranking officials have been severely injured. The full video can also be found on my Patreon. Next we go to Dnipro river to Kherson region, and Ukrainians destroyed a reconnaissance and assault group of Russians next to Dnipriane, along with their boat. And as we go to recently liberated key city Urozhaine, Ukrainians also reportedly were able to destroy a big entrenched position of Russians to the south of this settlement. And in addition to that, a large ammunition depot of Russians has been destroyed in Klyucheve. And then, as we once again refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, those Ukrainians who advanced extremely close to Robotyne, and then those Ukrainians who liberated Urozhaine, in fact, they were able to achieve a significant military success, because they were able to breach extremely complicated defense lines of Russians, which they have been constructing for the last several months. And without a doubt, this is a much more complicated task, so as soon as Ukrainians they gather their strength and receive even more reinforcements, we will see the further liberation in these areas. And Putin, obviously, he sees that Ukrainians are continuing to advance in the south, they are much more superior to Russian forces, in addition to never-ending and much more frequent recently attacks against the capital of Russia, Moscow. And without a doubt, Putin wants to make a response. Probably not the best one, but I mean, even invading Ukraine, this was far from perfect decision. And so, what I mean by that is that recently Russian authorities started adopting even more military summons related crazy laws. And just one of them, if you're about to receive the Russian passport, you also have to enlist yourself in the nearest draft office. The next thing that happened is that more and more Russian men, especially recently, they started receiving these notifications that they have to show up in the nearest military enlistment office just to double check their data. But wait, there is more, because the Ministry of Internal Affairs of Russia, they want to access the private messages of people without the decision by the any court of law. And well, all of this ultimately led to some military correspondents who allegedly have some ties within the Kremlin, who they started saying that yes, there is another wave of mobilization, a bigger one, coming on September 25th. The very first group of people subject to this mobilization are those who are in the reserve of the Russian army, and it is estimated that approximately 750,000 of them will only need to be double-checking their data, while 450,000 will go through the actual mobilization. And as always, one of the best confirmation that most likely this information is true is the reaction of the Russian authorities, such as for example Viktor Sobolev, who in the past was one of the main brainstorming ideas behind these crazy ideas about mobilization. He basically said, this is all fake news, there is no such thing that on September 25th, 2023 we will be mobilizing 1.2 million people. Where did I get these specific numbers? I don't know, this is, it just came at random. 
And if you remember from the last year, the second half of September is exactly the time when Russia announced its first partial mobilization of 300,000 people. So once again, the timing is pretty suspicious. But then things get even worse, because Putin signed recently another law, which makes Russia no need to notify the United Nations about the invocation of martial law within Russia, which basically means Putin can do it and he does not need to notify anyone. He just does it, you wake up one day and suddenly your country is within martial law. And ultimately, we even have the president of Chechnya, Ramzan Kadyrov, who is, by the way, welcome back, one of the very first time appearing in public, but not among regular people, but just from the inside of his palace, among his most trustworthy relatives. And he basically said that as soon as Russia finishes its goals in Ukraine, whatever they are, they will go to another country, especially the ones who are making bad things with their holy book Quran. He is obviously referring to Sweden, but I mean it is not right next to Russian borders. So they will, if case even this happens, I don't think it will, but in case even this happens, they will first have to march through NATO land. Which basically means these claims by Kadyrov are direct threats against NATO. And so yes, just like last year, I think that the month of September will bring us a lot of surprises and not all of them will be pleasant. If you don't want to miss any of this news, why either good or bad, just please once again consider subscribing to my channel, it only takes one click. The best way to support my channel, early access to daily episodes and hundreds of uncensored footage can be found on my Patreon. You can also become my channel member, unlock some channel perks or simply use a PayPal link, everything can be found to the right and down below. Thank you so much for attention, товарищи. Please follow me on Instagram and enter the giveaway. Beware the rust cameras in the comments and see you on Tuesday.